What all goes into a great training event for volunteers and small group leaders? And I want to start uh, with you, Tyreek. How did you guys rent out a middle school to Man. host a training event? So first, we have to give credit where credit's due. Uh, Buckhead Church Transit was doing stuff like this first, <clears throat> and we heard about it. We were like, oh, we want to do our own version of it. So shout out to Terrence and all them down there at Buckhead Church Transit doing an amazing job. Nice. But for us, it was once we... I think, like you said, like who does, like who goes to an on site meeting at like a middle school? But for us, because we had built a relationship with that principal, we were able to call her and say, mm -hmm. hey, um, we have people that are going to be serving your students. We want to put them in middle schooler's shoes. Can mm -hmm. we rent out or can we use your, uh, use the school over the summer when no one's there for a couple of hours for a training? And the principal was like, yeah, like we have a great relationship. We know y'all, we love y'all and what y'all do and our students benefit from what y'all do. Absolutely. And I would say yeah. the wow. part of the way you built that relationship is you do service projects with that school. Service correct? projects, Over yep. a period of years. All of that, yep. Was there anything else wow. that helped you build that relationship? I think that was the biggest thing. I think being consistent, like the service part, and she saw that like we cared for those mm -hmm. students and for those families. And so with the service projects, whether it was, um, buying Christmas gifts or whether it was stuff like that. I think the principal just saw that like, oh, they're not here just to preach, preach, preach and tell everybody they're sinners, whatever, whatever. No, like they, they really love these students. They want to see these students grow and mature. So yeah, so we had a relationship with the principal and we had a relationship with basically like the person that like was like the top counselor, like rank, like did like, like I guess it was like their community connect in a sense, right? And so we would do back to school stuff. We would do Christmas stuff with them. And I think just having that relationship that we invited them to come to church and they came and they got to see what we do. Mm -hmm. And I think that just led to a, a, when we, when it was time for an ask, it wasn't this, it wasn't like, a, oh, let me think about it. It was like, oh yeah, absolutely. Like no one's going to be here. Like y'all yeah. got it. So yeah. I love that just because uh, it wasn't just an email, someone on your team shot into the abyss into some middle school's you know, inbox. Like, right. hey, how much does it cost to rent out your middle school? Exactly. It's like, it all started with a relationship that was honestly, I assume, years in the making. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, there's probably people listening right now who are thinking you invited them to school, the public school to church and they came, like it sounds like a very in the South thing that would happen. Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's definitely differences in That's our country point. for sure. Um, and you can totally do this in a non-school environment too. Like if you Absolutely. don't have that in or that relationship or that's just not a thing in yeah. your area of the country, like it doesn't have to happen at a school. It just was so cool that it did. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think the, the point here is that what I love and why I kept going back to it, uh, that training event is because it was so outside the box. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have to, you know, use an entire school and bring a bunch of leaders. It could be three people and it could three leaders and it could be just a walkthrough of a school or it could be you could do something at on a sports sports field or whatever, I don't know. Or take everyone yeah. to the movie eighth grade and then talk about it afterwards. Totally, it's yeah. just like, hey, what does it look like to get outside of the sanctuary or get outside of the uh, normal things that come to mind when we think, oh, volunteer training, it's the second room on the right, the conference room, <laughs> grab your seat. You know what I mean? Just yes. kind of getting outside of the box. That, in my opinion, that is the first step of creating a great training event for small group leaders and volunteers. And I do want to circle back to that. So that is obviously just one element of a great training event. What else goes into a great training event for small group leaders and volunteers? Well, let me say this too. You can have the bus in the school and if that content is whack, it's still four yeah. periods of boring lectures mm, or whatever. That's good. And so I think even with what you communicate, thinking about how does that, I think the best thing that I've heard is like any mission has to fight against something, right? Mm. And so I think anytime we're training or whatever, putting that in front of the people that you're leading, right? So like with college students that I work with now, we know one of the biggest things they fight against is like loneliness, right? So at the beginning of our meeting, it's like, hey, you guys are so important. And if you ever think that you're not, remember that every time you show up to small group and a student shows up, you're fighting loneliness. You're helping to create a safe place for someone good. who doesn't feel connected to other human beings. This wow. is so deeply important. Cause then it, then it becomes, oh, I'm on a mission. Like I actually am fighting against something and I'm not just the, hall, the door down the road, then I gotta go here and sit yeah. and listen to some boring stuff. Like I think we have to keep the thing that we're fighting against in front of people because then it makes it worth it. That's great, that's really good. 
Ashley, I see you've got your notes pulled up on your phone. What are you thinking? Well, every time that I would plan a um, volunteer training, there were four specific elements that I included in every training. Okay. Um, the first one was a vision piece, like Tyreek was just saying. That's like, good. what is that vision piece? And it can be a sentence. It could be longer than that. It could be an activity, whatever. So there's a vision piece, a community piece. How do we connect the volunteers to each other? Because if they you know, finish serving in our ministry and they leave and don't have a relationship with another adult, then they've missed out on oh. one of the best parts about serving. So vision piece, community piece, a fun piece. I know I said I'm not a fun person, but it, the fun piece could be like even laughing together, like at something that happens or- Or ending the training early. Or <laughs> yeah, or ending the training early, or playing a game, Just I guess. Just joking. Or, you know, Play-Doh. something fun. Play-Doh, Play-Doh. <laughs> eighth grade personality. And then um, some meaningful training of some kind, depending on yeah, what it is. That's good. So vision, community, fun, and meaningful. And that was kind of how um, we organized our trainings. And then for the meaningful piece, there were four different kinds of things that I meant by meaningful. And okay. so the four different things that I would do um, were so like- So the, the fourth thing in your list of four things has four things. Yeah. Okay, wow. got it. We're all Well, tracking. the meaningful training piece would change. So that means it would either be like an age group specific training, like a phase training about that age group. It would be a volunteer job training. So like, what's your job as a small group leader? And that would be like covering partnering with parents and how do you navigate a conversation with teenagers? Um, it would be hard topics training. Mm-hmm. So That's how do good. we talk about consent? <clears throat> with middle school students? Or how do we talk about sex with middle school students? Yep. Um, and then it would be personal development. So for example, I remember, you know, we did one, this was when Strength Finder was a little bit of a bigger um, deal because Enneagram's kind of taken over now, but it would be like doing Enneagram coach comes in and literally personally develops your small group leaders. That's good. And so that, because the more that they understand themselves and their wiring, the better they are gonna be at understanding their teenagers. Wow. So those were kind of the ways we would organize our training. 